Hi, I'm John Rafrano from VAST, and this is Ultimate S Light Training. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Photo Montage tool. Photo Montage allows you to take your still images and bring them to life with pan, scan, and rotation. It even works great for videos, too. Let's take a look at what it can do. I'd like to start by showing you how to invoke Ultimate S from within Vegas. So once you have the software installed, you look under the View menu and go down to the Extensions. Ultimate S Lite is a command extension. And then look for the Ultimate S Lite menu. And you'll notice you can invoke Ultimate S Lite itself or any one of the command tabs. We'll get into that a little bit later. And so we'll click on Ultimate S Lite and up comes the interface. I'm just gonna undock it. You'll notice it docks in a window like any other Vegas window. I'm just gonna undock it and uh, show you that we have um, six tabs. We have a photo montage tab for doing um, picture montages or video montages. We've got a markers tab for all things markers, adding, deleting, converting markers. There's a film looks tab. Uh, and this will allow you to add that nice film look to your video. There's a lower thirds tab. Um, these lower thirds are uh, these little name plates that show up at the bottom of, uh, of videos. Uh, you, can, you can add those. We've got a number of lower thirds that you can uh, purchase. The DVD tab helps you prepare your video for DVD. It has a bitrate calculator to figure out how much you can fit in a DVD and some nice DVD rendering options. And then finally, the Setup tab, which will uh, help you when you first start your project to set it up with a couple of tracks, uh, audio, video tracks, maybe some buses. It'll even set up your media bin structure. Uh, so let's go back to the Photo Montage tab and take a look at Photo Montage. On the Photo Montage tab, there are several areas. So, so let me just take you through all the different areas on the tab first. Uh, up in the corner here, there's the Image Source tab. You'll notice you can take images from the timeline, uh, images that may already be in your media bin. And I say images, but they, they could be video files as well. And we'll use some video files, show you how that works. And then just pull them right off the file system, which I find the uh, easiest and quickest way to work with them. Then there's a section to crop the uh, images or the video to the aspect ratio of the project, which is important when you have uh, images of different uh, sizes. Then there's a pan and scan and zoom tool. And this will add motion to your images and kind of takes those still images and brings them to life. You add a little bit of rotation, a little bit of a slow zoom in, uh, panning across the image. Uh, then up in the corner here, there's the, in the right corner, there's the placement duration and transition length, which kind of go hand in hand, right? Placement allows you to say where I want these photos placed. Duration is how long do I want them to be on the timeline for. And then transition length says I might want to have a straight cut or I might want to transition from photo to photo. Then finally, in the lower right, there's the transition effects. And this allows you to take any one of the effects that's available to Vegas in any combination uh, and add them between the photos. So let's start by making a photo montage. I just want to show you, just using the defaults, how easy it is to get up and running with a photo montage. So I'm just going to move this to the side here so uh, we can see a little bit of the screen and, and a little bit of the timeline. I'm going to add photos from the file system. Um, and I've got a collection of photos here. I'm going to Type, uh, click on the first one, do control A, uh, that'll select them all, and then say open, and that immediately adds uh, 99 new photos. And then I'm just gonna press apply, and, and that's all I'm gonna do. And you'll see what happened at the bottom, let me dock uh, here. You'll see what happened at the bottom is all of the images have been laid out on the timeline for you well, with transitions between them. So let's take a little look at this. And you can see there's been motion applied. There's this uh, zooming in. Now, some of them need to be cropped. There's a vertical image, and we're going to fix that. Um, but basically, you've got your photo montage all laid out with the um, transitions that we had selected. So let's go change this up a bit. Now that I've got the images on the timeline, I can switch to timeline mode. And I can decide that I want to uh, affect all the tracks if I've got a multi-track photo montage or uh, just the video tracks or just the selected tracks. And we'll choose selected tracks and I'll make sure that I have uh, the photo montage tracks selected. Uh, so that'll work. Then we can decide what do you want to affect on the track. Uh, all the events or just the selected events. And, and I just want to do all the events in the track because in this particular case I'm just creating a photo montage on that single track. Now to take care of the crop, we're gonna match the project aspect. As you can see, there's 
a number of different aspects that Vega supports. Uh, usually you just have to use a uh, project aspect, this way it matches whatever your project is. And because each time I run the photo montage, it's going to do the match, I'm going to have it reset uh, every time it'll do a match. This way it's not uh, cropping the aspect multiple times. It'll just reset and then crop it once to the project aspect. Now in the previous one, we just selected the default preset. There's a number of presets built in. You can create your own presets. Um, uh, we've got um, upper lower with uh, rotate in and that will turn on rotation. You can see here uh, rotation has been turned on and I'm going to go into each one of these in, in greater detail. Uh, and I'm just going to run it again to just, just show you uh, what that does. So this time I'm going to click apply and then we'll go back and look at what this photo montage looks like. Now you can see there's a slight rotation. Uh, there was a little bit of black around the edges before uh, that got taken away and this was the vertical photo that is now cropped uh, to match the aspect of all the other photos. Okay, now we'll get back to pan and scan. I want to show you the uh, placement. I'm going to dock it uh, for a moment just to show you this, how this placement works. Uh, in placement you can decide a number of ways of placing the photos on the timeline. Right now we've got fixed interval and five seconds. So each one of these photos down on the timeline, if we uh, highlight them here, is five seconds. You can see that down on the bottom when I double click and, and make a, uh, a selection. But we could have placed them at markers. We could have fit them to the music if we had some music. Uh, we could have specified a region and fit them to the region. Uh, we can also randomize the order. They were fairly random on the, on the hard drive, but we could further randomize the order. And we can have the photo montage uh, start at the cursor rather than uh, at the beginning of the project. So uh, let's, let's look at some of these options by adding some music and, and playing around a bit. I'm going to go over to the Explorer uh, and uh, we have some music here. Well, I'm going to uh, go to our Vast Track Packs uh, and put some music down the bottom here. And now that we have music, we can uh, just play it with the music. And it gives a nice feel, a little music happening behind the pictures. The pictures are uh, just five seconds apart um, with no relation to the music. So let's see if we can go change that. We'll go to back to Ultimate Light um, and say, look, we'd like to fit this to the music. So we look down on the timeline here, we notice that there's many more photos than, uh, than there are music. Uh, and so we might want to fit this to the music. You probably want to add more music uh, uh, to this, so it won't be too short. But um, just to prove the point, I'm going to give a, a name to the music track here, just so it's easier to pick out. And now when I say apply, it's going to ask me to pick the... Um, oh, I didn't, I didn't select the uh, photo track, right? So it's going to ask me for the photo track. Um, and now it has fit all of these images to the music as you can see. Now these are going to happen way too fast. Crazy fast, you probably want more, more music on that, but just to prove the point that it will fit them to the music. Now one of the other things we can do is fit the photos to the markers. You'll notice in our music file here we've got embedded markers and we do those with the um, track packs that we sell at Vast. I'll show you on the marker tab how you can actually create markers on the beat. Uh, but right now we'll just uh, go to the marker tab. And one of the things we can do is extract the markers uh, from a, um, an audio file. So we're going to select the audio file. Uh, and then we're going to uh, create from embedded markers and regions. Now, one of the things you'll notice in the track pack files is there are markers and regions. And all we want is markers. So I'm going to do two things at once here. I'm going to hit clear page. It's a good idea to start in Ultimate S with uh, clearing the page so that none of the other options are chosen. We'll go back here and uh, select create the markers from the embedded markers and regions. And then I'm going to come up to convert and I'm going to say convert any region to a marker. So what it will do is it will extract the markers and the regions. These green ones are regions uh, the, and the, um, the pinkish ones are markers. It will extract the markers and the regions and then convert the regions to markers. So all we're left with is markers on the timeline. I'll click apply and it's exactly what it's done. It's taken those markers that were in the file, extracted them out to the timeline. Now I can go back to the photo montage. I can tell it that I want to place the events at the markers. Uh, we'll make sure that our uh, photo montage track is highlighted and I'll click apply and you'll notice that 
once again, they've been relayed out on the timeline, and now they're changing. Now it might be easier if we stop applying transitions uh, and just use uh, a fade or a cut. So in, uh, in apply transitions, you would think that if I turn off apply transitions, it would not add transitions. And initially it wouldn't, but because we have transitions, what disabling apply transitions does is it prevents it from changing those transitions. But in fact, we do want to change them. We want to change them to no transition. So we'll say apply none, and that will delete the transitions. So now I'm going to go back and tell it I want that no transition, cuts only, remove the transitions that are there. I click apply, uh, and now you'll see they're lined up exactly on the markers. We'll play it back. And there they are changing right on the marker. So very quickly, right, I was able to extract the markers from that audio file, uh, which happened to be on the beat, uh, and then um, place my images, or these could be videos, on the, uh, on the markers, which places them on the beat. Now, if you didn't have uh, markers, let's go back over uh, to our marker tab. You're, you're getting a lot of work out on how markers work. So I'm going to clear the page again, say remove markers uh, from the entire project, and I'll click apply. And now all the markers are gone. It's an easy way to remove markers. Um, and now what we'll do is we'll just go drop a marker on the beat. We can play it back. Um, we'll put an initial marker. Let me go to the beginning and put an initial marker. Uh, and then we'll drop them on the beat. So I'll play this. And... Now you notice uh, there were several downbeats there, so, so maybe I, I might want to have a, uh, a change on every one of those downbeats. I'm going to delete this marker here, Hang on. Uh, and I'm going to place them a little differently. Watch this. Two, three, four, boom. So now when we place them on the markers, fit them at uh, every marker, we'll click apply again. And you'll notice it put my, many more in a row there for the markers. And now let's watch how this one comes out. Quite a different feel. So you can be creative with how you drop markers. You don't have to drop them uh, uh, every measure. You can drop them uh, every beat sometimes, every measure sometimes. Uh, drop them wherever you want and know that Ultimate S will always sync those uh, images to the markers. Now the last thing I want to show you in the placement is to fit this to a region. Let's say you had a photo montage and it was in, uh, you know, it was in the middle of uh, your um, production. So I'm going to just uh, delete. I'm going to select all the events to the end here and delete them so we have less markers to work with. And what I'll do is I'll double click on this music and I'll create a region. And I'll say, uh, I'll just call it a montage, I don't have to, but we'll call that montage. And then I want to fit this to a region. And what will happen is, um, and, and let me make the region smaller than the music just to prove to you that it's doing it to the region and not to the music. Uh, when I click apply, watch. Uh, again, I didn't select the photo montage track, it prompts me. And now you'll notice uh, everything has been uh, cut to the region. Now, because the music track was also selected, it did the music. So let me do Control Z uh, to get that back out. I will select photo montage track and not the music track. Uh, and then I will say apply again. Uh, and now you can see that just this region here uh, is the area that the photo montage has been created in, uh, regardless of, uh, of the music. Uh, and then you can play it back from that region. So those are all the ways that you can change the placement in a photo montage. Now let's talk about duration for a second. We have kept duration as fit to placement. And what that means is if I place one at, uh, uh, place them every five seconds or I place them every marker, it will make the duration span to each marker or to five seconds or, or whatever. And usually if you want contiguous um, images, that's what you would select. But we can also select a duration independent of the placement. Uh, and you can get some nice effects. Let's say we, uh, we take and say, I want this at a fixed interval. 
uh, five second fixed interval. And, but I want to set the duration to only uh, three seconds. What would happen, uh, and I'm going to click apply here. So now you can see it has uh, placed the images every five seconds for three seconds. So maybe you might have um, uh, an underlay here. Well, let's take a, a piece of media. I'm going to go to the Explorer quickly and we'll go over to uh, some of our extreme sports and, and drop that in here. And just move that, move the photo montage on top of it. Uh, and let's take a look at this. I'm going to play it. And so now we've got a photo and then there's a gap so it shows the sports underneath and another photo and then there's another gap it shows the sports underneath, right? So you don't have to have the photo montage be contiguous uh, all the way across the timeline. You can leave these gaps uh, or create overlaps or however you want. So that's how the uh, duration works. And finally, you can set it to ignore, in which case it will ignore the duration, just maintain uh, whatever the duration of the, uh, of the clip is. Okay, moving on to transition length. Uh, we've, you've seen the two uses, which is the cuts, which is no transition at all, or setting the transition, in which case it will overlap uh, and get them back to a, a one, in this case, a one second transition or the fixed placement of five. Again, we'll I'll click apply and you'll see because we've got uh, applied transitions none, or if we turn apply transitions off at this point, um, it's only going to do a crossfade. So there's a nice gentle crossfade between each one of these. Okay, that brings us to uh, applied transitions. Uh, the transitions allow you to create. Um, presets and in these presets we've um, pre-populated them with a couple of things that kind of work for us uh, swapping uh, left and right let's show you how that looks we'll, we'll use swap left and right and then you can see how these will these will swap out as we go through the photo montage here it'll do a swap left and then it'll do a swap right uh, you can edit these lists and create your own list. So I'm going to click on edit and you can see I've got swap left and right here. We can uh, add to this. Uh, on the left, all of this, uh, all the transitions that are installed on your computer are available. Uh, so if I wanted to do a, a barn door or I wanted to do some kind of uh, 3D shuffle, I could add those in. I could take something out. Uh, we'll take these two out and click OK. And then when we click apply, you'll see that it's changed down here. When we click apply, it'll change to those uh, and we can just play it and you'll see we should have a 3D swap and a barn door and then another swap and then another barn door and then I would just save those uh, under a under a different name so we'll call this uh, swap and barn door click save and uh, that saves been complete and now it's added to the list along with uh, any of the other ones that are in there you've got your own so we encourage you uh, to go uh, create effects uh, you can add them forward or reverse so it could have done the vertical uh, the barn door first or the, or the shuffle first or in a random order it will randomly select one from the list these lists can be as long as you want uh, you can go in and, and, and add 20 30 uh, effects to the list whatever you, whatever you want to use so that brings us to the Pan scan and zoom, and we left that for last because there's a couple of things to understand here. Uh, but basically, these two sections are the same. One is for in, and one is one is for out, uh, and they behave identical. So you can say whether you want to zoom in or zoom out. You can uh, do one or the other, or both. Uh, and then the amount of zoom. So you see, there's a, a zoom at you know 55%, you know all the way to 95%, right? Which is a, which is a pretty deep zoom. So let's here, let's uh, let's apply. And, and watch these as we go. So I'm going to put the cursor back at the beginning uh, and we'll, we'll watch these. Now, now it did an out. Now the, the, uh, the transitions are kind of uh, overpowering this, so let me turn the transitions off. Uh, we'll select none up here with apply transitions and we'll uh, click apply again. So now we have no transitions and uh, let's watch this. There's a deep zoom, boom. Now all these zooms are going to be very deep like that, so that's it's kind of extreme, but it's showing you how uh, how deep it can get. Um, so you can decide whether you want to do it in or out. 
uh, and how much of a zoom. Uh, then you can add rotation. So you can add rotation on only the in, only the out. And you can do rotation, of no rotation, left, right, or both. It will, and when you select both, it will randomly uh, select whether it's going to go left or right. And then how many degrees you want to rotate. So right now we have it uh, on the in. Uh, we've got a zoom, 40% uh, 40, uh, 40 zoom. Uh, we've got it rotating left. And right now we'll just we'll deal with one of these so that every one of them goes the same way. Um, and it's going to rotate left, and it's going to rotate left five degrees. So I can uh, up this to something more radical, uh, and we'll apply it, and then you'll see uh, what it looks like. So there's a little more radical rotate going on there. And of course, all of them are in the same direction because I, I just said left. If I said both, it would randomly, click apply, it will randomly decide uh, how it's going to rotate. And then the increment here is uh, the number of pictures to skip. So it's how often will it rotate? Because sometimes rotating every picture, uh, you know, kind of gets boring. So I'm going to say we're going to uh, increment it by three. Uh, and apply, or by two would be easier for you to see. So by two, and that means every other picture will be rotated. So that one's not rotated as we play it. Uh, the next one is rotated. The next one should not be rotated. All right, and that's just a zoom. And then the next one's rotated. So you can see that you can control uh, what direction it rotates in, how much in degrees it rotates, um, and how often it rotates. And then finally, the delay. Um, sometimes for the zoom, uh, we want the de to delay a little bit. So we can uh, up the delay maybe to 15%, uh, click apply, and then we'll play it again. And you can see it holds still for a while, and then it, there you go. So it's doing a delay to hold that picture at the end. Now, of course, we have the um, the rotate in there as well, and so the rotate is still happening. But it's a nice effect. Finally, you can decide what direction you want these to happen. Um, I've got kind of uh, upper and lower diagonals, uh, but you can you can have these happen in all directions, and it will it will randomly uh, select what direction. And the movement uh, adjuster here is it controls the amount of pan movement relative to the zoom. So uh, it could move one third the amount of zoom, one quarter the amount of zoom, or uh, uh, one half the amount of zoom. And uh, so what you should do, uh, you know, as you increase your zoom percent percentage, you might want to increase the movement to make it more pronounced. And then you have to play back and forth with how much you're zooming in and, and how much movement you want to have on the pan. Now we've, we've only worked with, uh, with, with pictures so far, so let me, let me uh, clear everything out here. And we can do the same thing with, with video. So what I'm going to do is go over to the Explorer, and uh, we've got these extreme sports videos here that I'm going to use. And, and I want to show you another trick of using uh, Ultimate S and dropping markers on the timeline uh, in, in relation to the beat. So one of the things you can do with Vegas is to import audio at the project tempo. And what many people might not realize, let's go to the project properties here, is that on the ruler tab, we've got the ability to say how many beats per minute are in the project and how many beats are in a measure uh, and which note gets, gets a beat. So uh, this project is in 4-4 four, four time. There's four beats to a measure. A quarter note gets one beat. Uh, and it's uh, set at the default of 120. One of the things you can do with this, we go into the options, preferences, uh, audio tab, is say import audio at project tempo. This will take an audio file uh, that has uh, inf acid information in it and import it at the project tempo. And so what I'm going to do is take uh, a, a, an audio file here I have, a sports audio file. I can find it. Uh, it's cleverly going to be under music. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to drop this in. Right, there's that audio file. I'll go back to Ultimate S Lite, and we're going to go to the Markers tab, and I'm going to say, uh, hit Clear, and then I'm going to say, Create Marker on every four beats. And what this will do is drop a marker at every measure. We click Apply, and now it's dropped markers 
uh, on the beat. I'm going to go back to the photo montage tab. Uh, we'll go back to the file system and edit that. Uh, and we'll, you'll notice that we can kind of browse through these files here. I'm using the arrow keys to browse uh, to see what we have. I'm just going to, and you could change the order. I could move files up in the order or down in the order as they're, they're brought in. We're just going to remove them all. And then I'm going to add a set of video files. Uh, so those video files are in uh, my sports extreme. I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to open them and then say OK. And it's going to bring all of those in when I click apply it will bring all of those sports videos in. Now I'm going to change a few things here. I don't want to do any uh, pan scan and zoom so I'm going to set that to none. Uh, I don't have to uh, match any of the, the project aspect. I don't want any transitions. Uh, I'm just going to cut to the beat um, and we're going to place an event at every marker. And I'm going to click apply. And now what I have is a neat little sports intro video. Watch this. Nicely cut on the beat. I mean, within seconds, you've, you've taken an audio file, you've mapped it out uh, on the beat because we've told Vegas to bring it in at the project tempo, uh, and Ultimate S used that tempo to determine where the beats were. We've uh, taken some uh, high-impact sports video and map that out to the beat and created a nice little uh, sports intro. So you don't have to just use the photo montage for photos. You can use it for uh, video as well. You can combine video and photos, you know, however you'd like. Well, hopefully this has given you a pretty good idea of what Ultimate S Lite can do for you. Now it's time to add your creativity. If you have any questions, you could always contact us at ultimate support at vast.com. And if you don't have Ultimate S Lite yet, you can download it from our website. Until next time. Thanks for watching.